coming up on Bloom, how to bounce back and overcome mental hurdles that could keep you from reaching your goals. You have to decide, okay, I'm going, I'm going to consciously break that cycle and start speaking truth over my life. And meet a woman taking on grueling open water swims to honor her mother. And so when she passed away 16 years ago, I kind of vowed to continue her legacy. And... Plus, meet a basketball star who turned an unthinkable tragedy into triumph. We'll have all that and more as Bloom, presented by Lifeguard Imaging, starts now. I'm Gail Guayardo. Welcome to Bloom, presented by Lifeguard Imaging. We all face setbacks, adversity, or difficult situations in life, and bouncing back takes resilience and a strong mindset. When it comes to diet and exercise, a lot of us face mental hurdles, whether it be a lack of motivation or not enough knowledge. Embracing a healthy lifestyle isn't always easy. Psychological blocks could be caused by previous bad experiences with exercise or dieting, leading to a negative association with these activities. And the cycles of losing and gaining weight can lead to discouragement and the belief that sustained change just isn't possible. But it is possible, and our next guest is proof. Double certified nutritionist Martha Van Camp knows firsthand the mental hurdles and lies that can creep into our minds when we're trying to reach goals and bounce back in life. After successfully losing 140 pounds, keeping it off, and writing the book, Be Beautiful, Heal Your Relationship with Food, she joins us now with insight to help others on a similar journey. Thanks so much for being here, Martha. It's so great to be here. I love this topic. Yeah, so talk to me about some of the mental hurdles that you faced during your weight loss journey that I'm sure so many other men and women can relate to. Yeah, I don't think any, any of it's a, a new concept. Everything that we want to do, every bit of change that we want to do is always a mental game. So it's always thinking, I can't do it, I've tried it, so I will continue to fail. Oh, I can lose the 10, 15, maybe 20 pounds, but I'll gain them back. All these perpetual lies are nothing new. It's just that recording, that mental block recording that we have going on in our head. And so we got to figure out how to quiet that. So how do you quiet it? Well, first of all, you got to realize that we are biologically and chemically wired to think negatively. It is a source of safety for us. So once you realize, okay, where are these negative thoughts really coming from? Well, they're coming from your subconscious, not your conscious. Your conscious is your truth center in your brain. So it's coming from your subconscious. So once you recognize the pattern of, oh, I will always fail at a diet, oh, I will never be able to lose fill in the blank amount of pounds. Once you realize that's coming from not a center of truth, it's coming from your subconscious and it's this negative repeat cycle, you have to decide, okay, I'm going, I'm going to consciously break that cycle and start speaking truth over my life. You know, and the whole show today is dedicated towards bouncing back, but you have an interesting way of looking at it through a different lens of bouncing forward. Absolutely. You know, when I wrote Beautiful, Heal Your Relationship with Food, as you talked about, there could be a lot of things that stem from our childhood that we're choosing to still believe today about food and exercise and losing weight or even dealing with um, maybe an eating disorder or trying to gain weight, you know, the opposite of, of what most of us want to do. But I don't like this concept of bouncing back. Who wants to ever go backwards? How right. about we reframe this into something positive? So when we think about, all right, we've gone on a vacation and maybe we've been on a health and wellness journey and we've lost weight, but we're like, okay, wait a minute, I'm gonna go on vacation, I'm gonna take it easy, I'm not gonna be as legalistic. Well, generally, at some point in our nutrition journey, we're going to fall off the wagon. And in the book that I, that I wrote, I did this whole chapter on surviving and thriving after we fall down. And it's this concept of really reframing, not that we need to bounce back to where we were, but let's think about bouncing forward. All right, we fell down, we fell off the wagon, we you know took the training wheels off of the diet, and now we're on the sidewalk with scraped up knees. All right. Why did we completely blow the food plan we were on? Why did we choose to maybe drink the drinks that we did? What were the behavior choices that went into us feeling like, wow, I just really failed this last week and now I need to bounce back from that. So let's identify the behavior choices. Let's identify, okay, 
what could I do better next time? Where are those coping skills? Maybe I shouldn't buy five bottles of wine for the week long vacation and therefore, you know, I'm drinking one each night. But it's this concept, instead of going backwards, let's spring forward. Let's learn from something that just happened that made us fall down. And instead of thinking, okay, oh my gosh, I gotta bounce back, I gotta bounce back. No, nope. all right, let's reframe this and say, okay, what am I gonna learn from here and how am I going to bounce forward so I don't continue to make the same mistakes going forward? That's very, very interesting. Now, when can you plan for a fallback? Like, for example, I'm getting ready right? to go basically eat my way through <laughs> Italy with my family. And I've As been you to, should. Which I'm super excited about. And I, I really want to enjoy all mm -hmm. of these things that As I restrict myself from yep. in regular life. Right. So can you gear up for that? Kind of get yourself as healthy as possible before you step into... I think absolutely, but there's this, this line of legalism. So if you feel like you are spot on right now mm -hmm. and you're going to go to Italy and probably be spot off while right. you're there, right? So let's be a little bit more kind. No one is more... Um, unforgiving of ourselves than our own selves. No one's going to convict you more than you would already convict yourself, right? So that's first of all realizing like there's those negative thoughts again, but specific to your question, I would say, you know, you're going for a reason in a season and it's not that you're going for a whole year, you're going for a week. I think absolutely anyone who's going on vacation should enjoy those different sights, smells, taste, all those things. Also, just keep yourself equally active, as I know what you, what you guys do all the time. So there is this balance. You don't have to go hog wild and then spend the rest of your next day sleeping and then eat again. You have this balance. So it's framing, all right, what do I do every day that brings me this self-control and balance? And for you and me, it's probably eating pretty well and it's walking, exercising, and getting enough sleep. All right, so how can I, while I'm on vacation, define balance? Where is my healthy balance? So don't go into it, I don't think, just being like, okay, I'm gonna rip the Band-Aid off and do anything I want to. Where can you go and eat and drink in this wonderful vacation that you're going on without losing your peace? All right, does that mean maybe just two glasses of wine instead of a whole bottle of wine at night? Does it mean, okay, I'm gonna enjoy all these pastas, but for me not to feel badly about myself, I'm gonna avoid the breads. Or maybe tonight I'm gonna enjoy the breads and the cheeses and the wines, but I'm gonna skip the dessert. So I don't think it's a scenario where you have to be one or the other. It's about defining what's going to have you keeping your peace food-wise and recreationally while you're on this vacation. We have just under a minute left. Any final words for our viewers when it comes to just shutting down the negative chat or that keeps us from bouncing forward? Yeah, I think, you know, that negative chat, every time we hear something or we tell ourselves something negative, it takes three positives. So if I told you right now, gosh, Gail, I love your shoes and I love your jewelry, but gosh, I hate your dress. It would take three more positive comments or compliments to make up for that one negative that I said. By the way, I do love your dress. Yeah, thank you, I appreciate that. <laughs> that was the first thing I said when I walked in. Um, but you just gotta remind yourself, okay, for each negative thought I'm choosing to believe, I need to find three truths. So number one would be, oh my gosh, my hair is horrible today. Okay, well no, look in the mirror and tell yourself three truths. I look great, I'm presented well, my makeup is on point. So just remember, for every one negative, you gotta find three, three truths. I love it. We're gonna share this story on bloomtampabay.com. And we are thrilled Martha joined us on our podcast, The Bloom Health Club, in the WFLA Now Streaming Center to continue this incredible conversation. You can stream the full episode anytime on Spotify, YouTube, and Apple Podcasts. Bloom will be right back. You're watching Bloom, presented by Lifeguard Imaging, saving lives through early detection. Call now, 813-582-5222 to schedule your scan today. Living the Tampa Bay lifestyle means enjoying the sand, sun, and outdoors fun. So get out, get active, and nurture those healthy habits. Hey there, I'm Gail Guayardo, host of Bloom. Now there's a new all-inclusive place with everything you need to shape your lifestyle, boost your health, and improve your wellness. BloomTampaBay.com, Tampa Bay's premier health and wellness website, made to help you feel good. Whether you're a fitness fanatic, beauty buff, or just want to take your first step towards positive change, this free website is for you. 
see the Bay Area's hottest fitness products, the latest workout crazes, and learn nutrition tips from the experts. Plus, discover local events and experiences designed with your well-being in mind. Cultivate a healthy mind, body, and soul. Check out BloomTampaBay.com, your local health and wellness website. That's BloomTampaBay.com. Welcome back to Bloom. Today we're helping you bounce back. And our next guest is an inspirational speaker and SEC basketball analyst whose life took a turn after a terrible accident that left him paralyzed from the waist down. Now he's making it his life mission to help those paralyzed by fear to live in the now. Joining me now is the author of Sit to Rise, Turning Your Darkest Pain into Your Brightest Victory, Patrick Young. Patrick, thank you so much for joining us on Bloom today. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. It's a pleasure to uh, get every chance I get to share the story and hopefully inspire somebody. Yeah, so tell me about the tragic car accident in the summer of 2022. Um, and, and as horrible as it was, it pivoted you in life to do great things. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it was it was a forced pivot. It wasn't like one of those things where you get a rejection and you try to figure out what your next options are. Uh, you know, I, I came off one of the best years of my life in 2021 of uh, when I retired from playing basketball for sure. And so many doors were open as well as getting prepared for my wedding uh, in uh, July 9th of 2022 is what, what we had uh, planned. And yeah, I mean, the accident was nothing that I foresee saw coming. Uh, some one of those situations where you don't know how you're going to respond unless you like have to go through it. And, um, you know, at a certain point with all the things that come along with it, emotionally, mentally, spiritually, physically, uh, something in my mind just said, you know what, you still have a lot to live for. And, you know, I'm here. That's my, the sobering thought that I often come back to that I'm actually still here on this earth and I have the, the choice of how I'm gonna live my life on a day in and day out basis. So uh, the the pit that I went through, it pivoted me towards purpose and a calling that I've never been more fulfilled in doing uh, in the first 30 years of my life. Yeah, and, and I think it's such a beautiful story that you share because it gives people hope no matter what they're going through because, I mean, you were a, a Florida basketball superstar. You thought your life was going on one trajectory and then, you know, it, it, it pivots and it must have been an extreme test of your faith. Well, not only faith, but yeah, with it, with, within faith is identity. Um, what is true about me? What do I believe? But regardless, and, and, you know, I hate when people say blind faith because faith is blind. It's in the substance of things unseen that even though what I am seeing and feeling and experiencing right now might not be good, might not be ideal, that I can trust that God has a story or plan behind it. One thing that encouraged me so much, uh, one of my mentors was like, Patrick, God doesn't only look at you. He never only looked at your physical ability in the first, your physical, your prowess. He looks to your heart, which he values far more than you being able, obviously, and it might sound silly, but, you know, being able to dunk a basketball. But, you know, I've been, when you're in that world where there's so many people telling you how great you are and how good you are and you're going to be this and that, you do start to become your own idol to an extent and believe that the world revolves around you. You probably wouldn't verbalize it, but actions obviously speak louder than words. And I'm just so grateful for the humility and lessons learned that keep me here and keep me in this space where I feel useful, uh, in this space where I feel like I am doing what God has called me to do. And li literally, I was just, if, I don't know if you can tell, but I'm, I'm a little nasally right now. Um, I was in Tampa yesterday and we would have, I would have stayed, but it, it just was getting too much. I was there for a firefighter uh, executive development conference, which was one of the greatest blessings to, to be a part of that and all the fire chiefs in Florida and just their, their affirmation after I spoke and, and uh, encouragement, it just keeps me on the path, keeps me going. Well, Patrick, I mean, and I think that's incredible that you use your gift of public speaking and your story to help others get through their dark days. Yeah, yeah, and you know, I always kind of had this mindset and I call it the runner up mindset of one day I'm gonna have a message, one day I'm gonna do, write a book, this and that, you know, we can all have that kind of one day thing. and. This was forced humility that I went through. And it was like, all right, no more one day. Today's day one. 
what are you going to do? And, um, you know, there's been so many things that have happened along the, my journey of speaking, and it's not always necessarily about what I say. The fact that I, on a simplistic level, just show up in my circumstances, in the middle, uh, still in the unknown of what the future holds, it has such a great impact on people. I think perspective-wise, helping people just to see, you know what, I know my life can change in one phone call. Like all of us, we are one phone call away. You know, not to be morbid, of course, right. but that's the reality. And yeah. well, embracing that reality helps us be present. Well, Patrick, thank you so much for sharing your beautiful story with us. And next time you're in Tampa, make sure you stop by Bloom. We'd love to meet you in person. Sounds like a plan. All right. We're going to share Patrick's incredible story on bloomtampabay.com. And when we come back, meet a woman raising money for pancreatic cancer by swimming across the English Channel to honor her mom. Bloom will be right back. You're watching Bloom, presented by Lifeguard Imaging, saving lives through early detection. Call now, 813-582-5222 to schedule your scan today. Welcome back. Making a difference starts with one person's actions, and that's the case for a woman trying to raise money and awareness for pancreatic cancer to honor her mother. Joining me now with more on her upcoming 21 mile swim across the English Channel is Rachel Griffin. Rachel, welcome to Bloom. Oh, thank you very much. Good morning. How are you today? Doing really well. So Rachel, tell us about your inspiration for this swim and the goal to raise funds for pancreatic cancer. Yeah, so my, my inspiration is definitely my mom. So she was a pure advocate of helping those less fortunate on any level, whether we learn to do food drives, clothing drives, toy drives, you know, volunteer at soup kitchens and so forth. Uh, that's, we, we learned that at a very young age. And so when she passed away 16 years ago, I kind of vowed to continue her legacy in some way to help those in need. And since she passed away from pancreatic cancer, my, uh, my goal is to raise $100,000 and swim from England to France in her honor to raise money for pancreatic cancer so other families do not have to lose their loved ones, you know, as we did. Yeah, it, it is such a, a tragic, um, all cancer is terrible, but my father too died of pancreatic cancer. And I, I really appreciate, thank you. I appreciate so much what you're doing. And I know the English Channel is renowned as the Mount Everest of swimming. So <laughs> talk to me about your upcoming journey and how you're preparing for it. Yeah, it's gonna be a grueling one. It is 21 miles across from Dover uh, to Calais. And it's going to be a bit, a bit brutal. There is some crazy marine traffic, you know, freighter boats and all the great things. Uh, there's tons of jellyfish that I'm not going to be a big fan of. Huge swells, chop, wind, all, all the scariness that one would consider. Um, it's all going to probably happen. So in training, I've been putting myself through a bunch of different grueling, you know, training tests. So I'll swim in the morning when it's kind of glassy, but then I'll swim in the afternoon when the wind is up and the chop is up. I'll swim when I don't feel well just to push through it. So say for example, if my stomach hurts or my head hurts in the middle of the channel, I'm not gonna get pulled because of an, of a, an upset stomach. So I need to push through that in some capacity and remind myself that, you know, anybody, you know, it's not anybody can do this. And those that are, are going through an ailment such as pancreatic cancer, some of them can't even get out of bed. So the fact that I can get in the water and swim just a little bit, I have to keep going forward, you know, for that case. So lots of different tests, you know, pool drills for three or four hours, ocean, bay, you name it. Um, I'm out there uh, testing myself and pushing through uh, to help those in need. And, and I know back in 2018, you completed the Catalina Channel Swim, and we have sound from you in the middle of the ocean during that swim <laughs> that I want to play for our viewers. Take a listen. Uh, I'd love you to go for a little dip, baby, too. I'm Alex Bernos. Oh, nice. Sound good? Why? Uh, you know, just feel like crushing cancer. Nice. Oh. Happy birthday, Mom. She would have been 76 today. And I know you did that swim on your mom's birthday. What was that like? Yeah, that, even just hearing that clip gets me a little emotional. So when I decided to do this swim initially, it was a very scary tactic of, of, of upgrading my swimming because I have I had never swam that far in my entire life. I you know I basically just learned how to swim roughly 10 years ago, and so uh, so doing that in her honor on her birthday was a huge moment. For me, um, for my family, uh, just really kind of 
helping her legacy just really kind of stay alive to to help those in need. But just hearing that happy birthday, mom, and you know doing it for her it, like brings a tear to my eye because her inspiration just lives through through me. Ah, oh, it's so beautiful. And you also conquered the Manhattan Island swim yeah. called Twenty Bridges. And I want to take our viewers back to the moment you finished <laughs> it. Let's take a look. Awesome. I can't believe I did it. Oh my god. Touch and go for a second there. Everything is tired. Everything but, uh, is tired. It was awesome. And by conquering, <laughs> that was incredible. By conquering the English Channel, uh, you will achieve the prestigious triple crown of open water swimming. What would this mean to you? Oh my god, it would be huge. One, um, mentally and physically proving that I've been among the elite that have done the triple crown the three hardest in the world is just a huge honor uh so that would be amazing uh number two my sister who was on that last video she was on the the boat for new york and also for catalina and will be on for english channel so she separately will get her own you know triple crown so she's been through this along with my brother my sister my family they've all been on this journey whether in the boat or you know in their hearts and on the sidelines cheering me on so so doing this for my mom and her name um, and raising as much money as possible for pancreatic cancer is is the win overall. And the charities I'm, I'm raising money for, Memorial Stone Kettering out of New York, Pancreatic Cancer Action Network out of L.A., and of course, the, and the Hirschberg Foundation also out of L.A., they're technically really in my heart. They are the triple crown. I mean, I may be doing the hard swims, but they're really doing the hard work. So if we can raise money for them, that is the huge thing because pancreatic cancer right now is the number three cancer killing disease and you know to be fair it's going to be the second one any day now because it is a sneaky little disease that is never found in time it's usually found at stage three or stage four by then it's kind of too late and it's heartbreaking because oh, i think it's since like 1999 the survival rate was four percent we're up to 13 percent which is great but that is not nearly where we need to be and we are lacking in uh research and support from everywhere from just the research doctors to like the government to give us money because we need help. This is a sneaky little disease that that we need to we need to nip it in the bud and <laughs> and get it to help all these other families that are losing their loved ones. As you know, it's a it's a very heartbreaking disease to watch a family member go through it. And if we can do anything to do just anything at all to to help these doctors and researchers to to crush this cancer, that's kind of is what I'm doing. So that to me is more important. Obviously, I want to hit the shores of France, but in my efforts, if I don't, I'll be heartbroken, of course. But if I can still raise the money for those that are putting in way more effort than I ever will be, that is the, the true goal. Rachel, I know your mom is smiling down on you. Thank you for sharing your incredible story. It was awesome catching up with you. And we're going to share. You. You're welcome. We're going to share Rachel's amazing story on BloomTampaBay.com. And before we go to break, it is time for today's Bloom trivia question. True or false, pancreatic cancer has the lowest survival rate of all cancers. We'll have the answer later on Bloom. The following portion of Bloom is sponsored by Hospital for Endocrine Surgery. Parathyroid disease is a common and very detrimental disease, yet no one has ever heard of it. Joining me now to raise awareness during Parathyroid Disease Month is Dr. Jim Norman with the Hospital for Endocrine Surgery. It's so good to see you again, doctor. Good seeing you again, Gal. So talk to me about parathyroid glands. What are they and what do they do for our body? Well, it's interesting. Most people never heard of parathyroid glands, but we all have four parathyroid glands. They're pair around the thyroid. So they're two on the left, two on the right, on the back side of the thyroid gland. You can't live without them. That's how important they are. They run the calcium in our blood. And that's important because the calcium runs our electrical system of our nerves. So the analogy I use is like our car has an electrical system and our, uh, and our house has an electrical system where we have, they have electrons that flow through wires. In our body, we have Instead of wires, we have nerves, and instead of using electrons, we flow calcium. So the house has um, a voltage regulator that keeps it about 110 volts, and the car has about a 100. Uh, a car has about a 12 volt, you know, voltage regulator. The parathyroid glands are the voltage regulators for the calcium, so that we have a normal calcium level, so our electrical system of our nerves works well. So if you're 
car voltage regulator goes bad and the, and the voltage goes too high, the car fries. Our, our parathyroid glands run our calcium levels, keep it in a normal level. If a parathyroid gland becomes a tumor, the calcium goes too high and it fries our electrical system. So what's an indicator that we need to be looking for that something might be wrong? It's actually really simple. It's the blood calcium level. So everybody knows what their cholesterol level is, right? Well, a calcium level is more important than cholesterol. A high calcium is more deadly than high cholesterol. So everybody should know what their cholesterol, they should know what their cholesterol levels, but they really should know what their calcium levels are. And if your calcium level is high, that means you've got a bad voltage regulator, a bad parathyroid gland, which is a parathyroid tumor. How do you treat this, doctor? You take out one of the parathyroid glands. So you have four parathyroid glands. Um, it's the only thing that we have four of. That's how important it is. God gave us four of these because it's a quadruple redundant system. So when, when it goes bad, usually it's one of them that goes bad. And so you simply take out the one and you still have three normal ones left. So it's a small operation. You need to take it out. Now, I know you, you specialize in this. What would should we be looking for in a surgeon? Well, you, they're in the neck. They're behind the thyroid. There's a lot of vocal cord nerves and other nerves in the neck that's sort of busy in there. So you really need a surgeon who has an expertise in parathyroid surgery. So the hospital of endocrine surgery, we do more than anybody else in the whole world. People come here from all over the world for our expertise. Um, and so you really want a surgeon who does this all the time that, so that complications don't arise, you don't lose your voice, those sorts of things. Yeah, I was gonna say, what happens if you leave this untreated? So parathyroid disease will eventually kill you. If you have a parathyroid tumor for like 20 years, you'll, you'll die of it. So it's really a bad problem. It causes bad osteoporosis. All the calcium comes out of your bones and, s and into your blood. So your bone calcium goes low. You get bad osteoporosis and fractures. And the high calcium goes into your blood. And so it causes calcifications of your coronary arteries, calcifications of your kidneys, kidney stones. So it, it affects a lot of different things all over your entire body from this little teeny thing in your neck. Crazy. Doctor, thank you so much for sharing this really important information with our Bloom viewers. Right. Great to see you. Good to see you too. Head to parathyroid.com, a great free online resource on parathyroid gland function, normal calcium levels, parathyroid disease, parathyroid surgery, and more. Bloom will be right back. The preceding portion of Bloom was sponsored by Hospital for Endocrine Surgery. You're watching Bloom, presented by Lifeguard Imaging. We begin where your checkup ends. Call now, 813-582-5222 to schedule your scan today. Welcome back to Bloom. Your brain is well protected from most damage, but there are injuries that can leave people suffering. Here with innovative ways to treat craniocervical issues is specialist Dr. Chris Slininger. It's great to see you, Dr. Slininger. Thanks for having me back, Gail. So talk to me, I know you've had a, 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 a real passion for creating a plan to help people dealing with these kind of issues. How do you treat this? Yeah, so mild traumatic brain injury is a, a, a massive issue in the military, and it has something been something that's been on my radar for about 12 years. Uh, when I got out of the military, I was actually trying to help with this uh, area, and there wasn't really an avenue. So what I found is mild traumatic brain injury, especially when it comes to things like blast injuries and some of the impacts you get in, in military training, um, as well as encounters on and off the battlefield, our biggest concern is that it's affecting the brain, but what I've found over these years is it's actually having a much bigger effect on the neck and the brain stem and some of the, uh, some of the things that actually feed the brain, like the cerebral blood flow. Yeah, and I, I was reading some statistics. There are well over 20,000 documented mild traumatic brain injuries every year, so it's more common than we might imagine. Yeah, that's actually just from the, the United States military, wow. and those are only the documented cases. And I've been a part of the military culture. I know a lot of people that are a part of that culture. And one of the things that we have as an unspoken rule is if you want to finish training, you don't always say the kind of injuries that you get. So those are just the ones that are recorded. It's actually far higher. And I know something else that's really important to you is you know, kind of switching gears a bit from the way the military typically cares for people dealing with these issues. Can you talk to me about that? Yeah. So. 
when it comes to mild traumatic brain injury because the impact was to the head or because they have cognitive issues, symptoms like headaches or migraines or pressure in the head, even brain fog, the assumption is that it's a brain injury. But when these soldiers, these military members and these veterans are getting evaluated, they're not finding as much evidence in the brain. It's not like an injury to the soft tissue, but it's clearly an, a problem with the way the brain works. And so we took a step back and we, we evaluated what's going on in the brain and what's contributing to these symptoms. And what we found is it came down to three main factors, that there was a problem with the nerve signaling between the brain and the body right in the upper neck at the brainstem level, the lower part of the brainstem, and it was causing uh, the brain not to function right or fire right. So it, even the way it was processing information wasn't being processed correctly. And then it was affecting the blood flow into and out of the brain. So the brain wasn't even getting the blood it needed to function right. And then it was even causing some obstruction to the flow of cerebrospinal fluid. And that's the fluid that nourishes the brain and protects the brain. And sometimes if it cannot filter correctly, um, over time, if you leave it long enough, the brain will start to break down. It starts this process of neurodegeneration. And that's why you see a continuous decline with these people uh, over time where their brains work worse and worse and the symptoms get worse and worse over time. So talk to me about the steps that you're taking to treat this condition differently. So when we evaluate someone, a lot of times they've already been uh, evaluated by a neurologist, someone in the military, and, and they've had uh, MRIs and brain scans and brain tests, and, and they're coming in without an answer as to why they have symptoms. So they have chronic migraines, uh, vision problems, they don't sleep very well, and in, in some serious conditions, PTSD is very prevalent. Mm -hmm. It's even contributing to the rise of suicide rates. This is, this is becoming well known. So what we're doing is we're taking a look at what's happening in the upper neck. Um, and what happens is these blast injuries and the head injuries, when they get an impact, it's whipping the head. And this whipping motion is causing a disruption of the alignment in the upper neck. And so when it gets misaligned, that's what's actually putting pressure or causing interference on the nerve signals. It's actually putting pressure on blood vessels and cutting off blood flow into and out of the brain. And it's even causing that cerebrospinal fluid not to flow right, right at the junction between the skull and the neck. Wow, this is fascinating. And I think it's really cool that you're coming up with a, a, a different protocol that will help the military members. And I know you work with both non-military members mm -hmm. and military members alike, but we appreciate all that you do to make a difference. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Slininger. And we're gonna share Dr. Slininger's story on bloomtampabay.com. And when we come back, meet the men who help women bounce back from major issues like cancer or financial hardship. We'll be back with more Bloom right after this. Welcome back to Bloom. In a world that can often feel so dark for so many, there's a nonprofit helping women find support during times of adversity due to catastrophic illness, domestic violence, or lifelong trauma. The My Fairy Godfathers work to help women find their confidence and discover their beauty shining through by providing goods and experiences that can truly change lives. Joining me now is the co-founder of the My Fairy Godfathers, Andrew Ashton, and beauty makeover recipient, Jada Guzman. It is great to see you both. Thank you for having us. So Andrew, let's start with you. <clears throat> for the, those who are not you know, familiar with your foundation, you really do help to build so many lives. We do, and you know, the foundation's all based on having women feel beautiful. That's our motto, and we've uh, helped a lot of women over the last 11 years, um, Jada being one of them. And we're going back, I think, 2018, was 2017. it? 2017. 2017. Yeah. Um, and she's done such wonderful things wonderful since thing. then. It's been so wonderful to even mm -hmm. keep up with her over all this time. <laughs> yeah, so Jada, talk to me about where you were in life when you first met the My Fairy Godfathers yes. and how this makeover transformed you in so many ways uh, over and above just your yeah. outer beauty. So when I met the foundation and Andrew and Steven, I was in my senior year and I was faced with emotional and financial hardship that I, you know, had to take on a role as far as caregiver for my family and provide financially. So it kind of took a damper on my self-esteem and the outlook that I had on life. So when I was given this prom experience, I was able to basically change the trajectory of what a young woman embodies as far as, far as beauty and essence. So it, it gave me the confidence that I needed to embark on the greater world that was ahead of me. 
which you have done. What are you yes. up to now? Yes, yeah, so uh, after the prom experience, I went to Florida State. I graduated, got my four-year bachelor's degree. Um, I had a number of internships. Um, I'm now working on my master's. So I am pre-medicine and hope to become an MD someday. Soon. That is Soon. really, really <laughs> incredible. Soon. And Andrew, I mean, this is just one of so many stories where the both of you have come together to help women. And when we talk about building beauty and confidence from the inside, that's that's very real. Oh, it's it's right. very real. And a lot of women base what they see in the mirror as, as beauty, but more importantly, it's what they feel on inside. the inside because that's where the confidence and the self-esteem and all that comes from right. to make sure that you're doing good in the world and you're going out there and you're accomplishing things. Make a difference. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And it is interesting to me how like one act of like providing a makeover can change everything. Isn't it incredible? Everything. Just looking back on that experience, I, I like I said, the confidence and the mindset that I had as far as not understanding what you went through can change everything as far as what you're entitled to as the next person, yeah. for sure. And Andrew, why is this so important to you to be able to do this? Well, you know, I've been in the beauty business for so many years, and um, I just feel that women need to feel beautiful. Yes. Um, they need to feel yes. empowered and, and confident. Give and I think, push. yeah. Yes. And, you know, we all go through things in life. It's just part of life. But some people go through a lot more. And I just want to make sure those women are, are taken Heard. care of as well. Seen. Yeah. yeah. And it's amazing to me how the entire community, because this is a grassroots effort. Yes. I know you guys have been up to this now for, you know, more than a decade. Right. But over the years, people have really gotten behind yeah. your mission. Yes. We, they, we really have. We've held a couple of so um, big, so big, yeah, galas. Yes, yes. Um, and we have have a lot of, you know, most of the high schools in the Tampa Bay area know of us now. Yes. Um, we're just so blessed to be able to help. Uh, now we're al almost approaching 3,500 women over the last decade to help. So we're, we're so blessed to be able yeah. to do what we do with the supporters of, of our donors. Yes. And, and why is it so important for you to share the messaging of what the My Fairy Godfathers do? The essence, what they are, what they embody, and how they really put beauty at the forefront. And they love what they do. It's a passion for sure. And you can tell that in their work. Yeah. Sure. Well, congratulations you. to you on all of your tremendous you. successes in life it. and uh, keep in touch with us. We yes. always love to hear what you're yes, up to. I love to come back and speak yeah. with you. Yeah. All right. Yeah. yeah. And then to find out more about the My Fairy Godfathers, head to bloomtampabay.com. And when we come back, we'll tell you about a youth wellness workshop honoring the legacy of former Buccaneer and the founder of Jackson in Action 83 Foundation, Vincent Jackson. We'll be right back. We are back. Approximately one in five teens experience a mental health disorder each year, with anxiety and depression being the most common. And it's reported about half of all mental health disorders begin by age 14, making early intervention crucial. Joining me now with more on efforts being made to help kids is the executive director of Jackson in Action 83 Foundation, Allison Gorell, and the chief impact officer of Frameworks of Tampa Bay, Whitney Alga. It is a pleasure to have you both here. Thank, Thank you. you. So let's start with the Jackson and Action 83 Foundation and, and what's being done. I understand that you have the Mind Masters event coming up. What's it all about? So we created Mind Masters um, to really branch out from the traditional support we've provided just to military children and families. Um, a lot of people remember Vincent Jackson was a military child. so. We still operate a lot of those programs that support military, but um, his wife, Lindsay, still lives here in the community. She has four children and was an elementary school teacher for years. So her passion is really just children and their healthy development. So she had the desire to create a program to, to help children with their emotional intelligence, their mental wellness, things like that. So this program really speaks to her legacy now of Jackson in Action and what she wants to contribute to the community. That's incredible. And I know Frameworks, obviously, this is a, a lifelong mission of the organization and for military kids, but also all middle schoolers, correct? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, we work um, with schools and youth-based organizations all over the Tampa Bay area. And um, our mission is to equip them to become um, kind, collaborative, and capable citizens. And we do that by working directly with the adults who work with the kids in schools and youth-based organizations. 
um, to both model emotional intelligence, but also confidently teach it to the children. And the reason that's related to this is because emotional intelligence, um, which includes resilience, is a protective factor against mental illness. And, and talk to me about what will actually happen at the event. So when the youth come in, and it's for any rising middle school students, sixth, seventh, and eighth graders, they'll start the morning with a keynote session from Nate Evans Jr., who's a nationally known uh, speaker who speaks primarily to middle and high school age students. While the students are hearing from him, their parents actually have the opportunity to sit in on a session with Dr. Nakisha Hammond, a local psychologist who's gonna equip the parents as well with how to raise mentally and uh, emotionally intelligent um, middle school students. So then uh, Frameworks will be partnering with us throughout the day. The students will uh, visit breakout sessions with Frameworks leading, leading some of those throughout the day. The really neat part is at registration, students get to select um, an area that they're interested in for an interactive therapeutic activity. So at the end of the day, students will get their choice of yoga, physical movement, art, animals, um, things like that to be able to, to kind of learn about how those things can help improve their mental and emotional wellness as well. I think it's really incredible, especially the fact that you're, you know, letting the parents be part of all of this because many times we don't know how to spot this. And so it's great to educate them as well. Ladies, thank Correct. you both for coming in and sharing the news about this great event. Thanks for having us. Thanks for having us. And the My Masters event is Saturday, August 3rd at the Skills Center in Tampa. We're going to put all the information that you need to know on bloomtampabay.com. And don't go away. We will be back with more Bloom right after this. It's time for today's Bloom trivia question. True or false? Pancreatic cancer has the lowest survival rate of all cancers. The answer is true. Pancreatic cancer has the lowest survival rate of all cancers. Just three to 6% of those diagnosed survive for five years and is currently the third leading cause of cancer related deaths in the United States after lung and colon. Well, thank you so much for tuning into Bloom today. You can catch Bloom anytime by following us on social media. We're on all major platforms, so get a behind the scenes look at all of the innovative breakthrough health and wellness conversations and incredible guests that we have right here on Bloom. And don't forget to check out our podcast, The Bloom Health Club. You can catch it live on Facebook and YouTube on Mondays at 2 p.m. We take a deep dive and have extended conversations with some of the top guests that we have right here on Bloom. You can watch our podcast anytime on YouTube or listen on Spotify and Apple Podcast. Well, we hope you'll tune in again on the next Bloom presented by Lifeguard Imaging. Top neurologist and the creator of the Brain Shift Protocol, Dr. Romy is joining us with ways to keep good energy in your life and keep it constant. And the Today Show's Joy Bauer is whipping up delicious and nutritious watch party snacks as we count down to the Paris Games. Stay healthy, everyone, and I will see you on the next Bloom. Content segments during Bloom were paid for by Hospital for Endocrine Surgery. Call now, 813-582-5222 to schedule your scan today.